John the Baptist's disciples must have been stunned. They go out there to the river to hear his preaching or to be baptized because they've heard of him and he's nowhere to be found. He's been hauled off, taken to prison, thrown in the dungeon by Herod. So they're all standing there and, and John hears about what Jesus is doing and so sends a couple of his disciples to go ask, are you the one? Are you the one that we're supposed to be following now? And Jesus responds to them and then he turns to everyone else who's there, stupefied, and he says to them basically, what did you think was going to happen? What did you expect? Did you expect that John would be out here forever and a day? Did you expect that he was going to be allowed to keep preaching as he was preaching? Did you come out here to see a king? No. Kings live in palaces. Kings, kings are, are the movers and shakers of the world. You didn't come out here to see a king. So what did you come out here to see? You came out to see a prophet, didn't you? Yes. And you know the prophets. When has a prophet ever been accepted by the people? When has a prophet ever been allowed to complete his ministry without being persecuted, without being arrested or put to death? So what did you think was going to happen? It's harsh words in some sense, a reality, that these people are living in that, oh my gosh, here we thought John the Baptist was so great, and even Jesus today says he's the greatest born of woman. And yet, even as the greatest born of woman, he suffers greatly. He's thrown into prison and he's taken away from his ministry. And nevertheless, Jesus has reason to hope. He gives us reason to hope. Because the blind see, and the mute speak, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and those who are poor have the good news preached to them. That there is something still good going on. So what are you here for? Are we here to be stuck now in, in the, the, the misery, the mire, the evil, the darkness that is all around us? Or are we here to follow the light and to go after those things that are of joy? Jesus encourages now those disciples, those people who are looking for John, to now rejoice even though he's in prison, and even though he's been taken away, to rejoice, because there is good news. Things are about to change. He is the one to usher in a whole new era. And I think that's why the church today celebrates this Gaudete Sunday in the middle of Advent, this rejoicing Sunday, because even in the middle of the season, we're not at Christmas yet, but even here in the middle of the season, the church reminds us, you have to rejoice today. You can't just wait until the end. You have to rejoice today. You have to celebrate now. And as I was thinking about that, Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland jumped to my mind. Because I think of Alice who goes through this strange place and she happens upon this tea party being held by the Mad Hatter and the March Hare and their friends and it, there, there, there's a, a party going on and Alice says, what are you celebrating? And they're celebrating their unbirthday. It's an unbirthday party. It's like an unbirthday? What the heck is an unbirthday? Well, you've got one birthday every year, but you have 364 unbirthdays. So if you're going to celebrate something, why not celebrate the unbirthdays? Because you get more of them. And, it, and it's crazy. And that's why they're called the Bad Hatter and, and the March Hare and so on and so forth. Because it is crazy. But there's something beautifully logical in that. Why would we not celebrate the greater unbirthdays than just the one birthday. The church, in some way, invites us into that craziness. The church invites us into celebrating even now when Christmas is still a ways away. Don't forget that the Lord has already won the battle. The Lord has already conquered. And so even now, 
we are allowed to experience that joy. And we are allowed to carry that in our heart. And we are allowed to celebrate it. It is only right and just. The resurrection is always prominent in our lives. The birth of Christ is always prominent in our lives. We can never forget that. And even as John the Baptist has been taken away from, from the, those early followers looking for the truth, he has been taken away, and everything seems now to be dark again, that, that evil is triumphing, that the wicked and those in power are continuing to hold back the truth and the poor. Jesus does not allow that to bring him down. Even in the midst of that injustice, he bids his people rejoice because all these good things are happening. And so it reminds us as Christians to keep that joy alive in our hearts. No matter what is happening, there is goodness also happening. No matter what trials, tribulations, losses, distresses, no matter what darkness surrounds us, there is light, and there is joy, and there is hope, and there is goodness. Are we willing to see it? Are we willing to look at those things as well and to rejoice in them? I think a mark of a Christian, mark of one who is filled with the Holy Spirit, is always that joy is radiating from them. That no matter what they are going through, there is still a joy that uplifts, that gives us hope and that keeps us moving forward. It may be difficult, we may be going through a trial, we may be mourning, we may be struggling, we may be doing all of those things, but we still go forward in hope because we know how the story ends. And we know that today is on Christmas. And today is a day to celebrate Christmas even though it's not Christmas. And today is a day to celebrate the resurrection even though it is not Easter. That today, as every day is, is a day to proclaim our joy and our happiness. And that's what moves us in the world, and that's what causes the world to be changed in many ways. So that should someone encounter us in life, knowing what's going on, knowing what we're, what we're struggling with, or, or knowing that the world is a dark and dangerous place, and it's hard raising kids in this age, and it's hard thinking about where the world is going, and what's going to happen in the future, and so on and so forth. All of these things surround us, and yet we go forward in hope, and we go forward in joy, and we go forward knowing that Christ conquers. And anybody who looks at us should think, well, that's crazy. How can you be so optimistic? How can you be so filled with hope? How can you have that joy when all of this stuff seems to be falling apart, when nothing seems to be working the way it's supposed to, when, when, when this, that, or the other thing? Because Christ has conquered. And today is a day to rejoice in, as is every day. And so as we go forth here, from here today, we carry that flame with us. We carry that joy. And we, too, should be robed in cheer. I think that's also why the church chooses robes as the color for today, because it's a cheerful color. It breaks through the dark somberness of violet, and here all of a sudden is this cheerful color that reminds us to be happy, to be joyful, to smile, and to share that goodness, and to pass on that positivity, and to announce the good news. And that's what struck me in Jesus' list today. That as he is describing everything good that's going on, despite all of this bad stuff, he starts saying all of these good things, and he builds them. The deaf hear, the mute speak, the blind see, the lame are walking, and the dead are raised to life, and the good news, and the good news is preached to the poor. It seems like that should have been the first one, and everything else is getting bigger and better from there. But that's really the best, even greater than the raising of the dead, is the good news is announced to the poor. Because when we hear the good news, when we are filled with hope, when we know joy, it changes our life like nothing else can. Yeah, we can have all of those other things going on, 
But if we don't know the good news, if we don't know the joy and happiness of Jesus Christ, nothing else matters. That is the greatest thing that happens to us today. You have heard the good news. You know the good news. Celebrate today. This is your unbirthday. Maybe it's your birthday too. I don't know. But this is probably an unbirthday for most of us. And it is certainly an unchristmas today. It is a day to celebrate. Because Jesus, even though he is coming, has already come. He is already in our midst. That is why we are cheerful. That is why we announce his presence with joy.